I think there are a lot of advantages to the advent of birth control, but there are also a lot of disadvantages, and that's what I want to talk about today. Those of us living in today's age who have grown up with birth control think that this is how it's always been, but it hasn't. Our entire history of humanity was pre-birth control. Okay, we live closer to the earth and there were a lot of hardships that came with that, right? Like women generally from the time that they menstruated and were married or even before they were married were tied to childbearing. I think that maybe some women figured out early what I figured out in my marriage or learned about, which is called the natural family planning method, where a woman takes her morning temperature and checks her cervical mucus to determine when she's ovulating. I used this for many, many years as my birth control method when I was pregnant because I, I didn't want to take the pill. I didn't want to have an IUD or something in my body. Um, I'd also at times use a diaphragm. Um, I don't even think those are that popular anymore. But the natural family planning method is really good because when a woman is ovulating, our body temperature will rise and our cervical mucus will change from being, um, it'll change to like a very stretchy egg white type of consistency while we're ovulating and even a few days before. And it's kind of a really nice way of staying attuned to our bodies and know what's happening. Also, um, I use the same method to get pregnant when I wanted to become pregnant, okay? But I'm sure that women before the 60s when the pill came about were aware of these methods, but I really don't know. I'm not a historian. I'm not a doctor. I'm just, you know, a woman making these videos. But before the 60s when birth control was available or abortion was available, when abortion was illegal, women had to be very selective in who they had intercourse with because they knew they could get pregnant. Not only that, a woman often didn't have any financial power and was financially dependent on a man. So if she were to become pregnant, she needed someone to provide for her. I would say throughout history, women have had to be very choosy. We evolved to be very choosy in who we had sex with because we have a lot more at stake, like getting pregnant. But men also had a lot at stake because it was the custom that when a woman became pregnant, the man would marry her. Now, I don't know if every man married every pregnant woman. I know that there were many um, scoundrels and charlatans and con men out there. But I know of so many cases where people were kind of dating and they had sex, the woman got pregnant, and then a shotgun fire wedding happened. Uh, this is usually when people were in their teens and whatever dreams that people had for career or work, going to college or going to Hollywood or something they wanted to do with their lives was completely uh, discarded and squashed. And the dream was scattered to the winds because now the pregnancy was the main thing and people were forced to get married. And, you know, I know of people even in the 20s and 30s who were forced into these weddings. It's not like people were not having sex. They were having sex. But when the woman got pregnant, she got married. And I think that women were very intentional about who they had sex with. And men knew, if I get this woman pregnant, I have to marry her. So people were a lot more choosy about their sexuality. And I'm kind of inspired to make this video because I'm reading this book right now. And this woman, this is such a good book, and I I rarely read novels. You guys, this book is so spellbinding from the beginning. But this woman ends up getting pregnant in the first few pages already. And um, 
And the man, the young man whose parents had dreamed of sending him to college, just happened in the in the 1920s in Texas on the farm. Um, he the dream was shattered, and her parents disposed of her, sent her off to marry this guy, and she that's what they did. I they didn't even love each other. That's just what they had to do. But nowadays. Um, Birth control has a lot of advantages. It has freed women from being, um, having their life completely circumscribed by childbearing, pregnancy and childbearing. And many women today are choosing not even to have children. Um, somehow on my YouTube channel, I came across all these channels of women who are choosing not to have children and how happy they are with their lives and how much pushback they're getting from society about, you know, that there's something wrong with them and that they're someday going to regret it, but that they're completely happy with their choice. And, and um, other women can delay childbearing while they're going to college and so on. It's allowed women and men to be sexually active without the risk of pregnancy. And of course, there's abortion available as well. So there's kind of a downside to that is that people have become less discerning about their sexual partners. People have started to treat sex as something very casual, the same way that you might, you know, wave to someone, uh, in passing or say hi to someone in passing, you can just fuck a stranger now. And that's what many people are doing. Um, and I don't think that's a good thing. Um, more and more women are now realizing that the hookup culture isn't helping them at all. And more and more men are realizing that hookup culture isn't benefiting them either. Just because we can doesn't mean that it enriches us or makes our lives better or moves us forward in any way. So um, the sexual force is very strong and I first became aware of it as a young teen when I started growing my body started growing I was always this very skinny little kid and in puberty as most women do in puberty as women do we gain weight naturally and we start to fill out and after a year or so we go back to some kind of like a regular form right but as I started blossoming out and getting big breasts and a big butt I noticed that there was a power that came with it Maybe this could be a separate video, but I'm going to put this all into the same video. There was a power that came with it and that I could attract the gaze of men. Before I was just a little girl who was helpless in the world, powerless. And when I started to develop, I felt like there was a power that came with it. And that men, grown men, suddenly noticed me and looked at me and it felt there's a power in that. And that's what I want to be very honest about that we cannot, we as women cannot misuse that power. And the power isn't what we think it is, ladies. The power seems like, oh, this guy is noticing me. He must like me. No, he's noticing your tits and your ass and his male sexuality is enlivened. It has nothing to do with him liking you or wanting to even care about you. But as women, we don't know that, okay? As women, it feels personal, like, oh, this guy is noticing me because we're thinking with our female brain. We're thinking with our female brain because if we notice a guy, it's because, oh, I like this guy. But with men, it's not about liking us. It's about being attracted, sexually aroused by the image or by the visual. It's not personal at all. 
but we don't know that. Like it's attention, it's validation, it's power, you know, and I can attract the attention of men by walking sexy or flirting or dressing in very skin, skimpy ways. But that to me is, it can be easily misused. Okay, it can be easily misused to manipulate men or use them, misuse their attention. Um, and I'm thinking of women who dress provocatively to try to turn men on or who try to turn men on knowing they will never give anything more than just a glimpse and it's not the same as healthy flirting. It's leading on. It's not honest and it's not authentic. And so I just think that we have to be very careful because I'm letting men know and women know, let's just be honest, that women do this because they feel a sense of power. But it's not a healthy power necessarily. It's like the power you feel when you're angry, like you feel so powerful in your rage and your self-righteousness but it doesn't mean that it's a good, healthy energy. And the sexual power is really there, but I think it's often misused by casually hooking up with guys or using our sexuality to turn men on without offering them anything beyond that, without offering them anything of the heart, or anything deeper, or even offering them sex at all. Now, the same applies to men, um, because men can abuse their sexual power also. Um, they get turned on, and they make a beeline. They're, they're, a young man's mindset is, how can I deal with this woman to get access to her genitalia? What must I do to manipulate this woman con this woman, play the game that this woman needs, say the right things, do the right pickup lines, be the right guy, so I can bypass her personality, her heart completely, and just get into those pants, okay? That's the most primitive way. I'm not saying all men do this all the time, but that is the primitive mindset. How can I access that pussy? Uh, I don't care about the woman. I don't care about her feelings. All I just need to get in that pussy. And that is the man's wounded state of his sexuality. That's how he abuses his sexuality. Because um, a man's sexuality is meant to penetrate a woman with his love, with his power, with his giving, with his tender care and attention. Not to plunder her and leave her. But when women have stopped becoming selective and choosy, it has encouraged men to, to misuse their sexuality in this way. And then other men see that and they're angry, like the incels, they're angry that they can't get that, as if that's some kind of a prize to just fuck people as objects in some kind of a casual way. And yes, you can have sex in this very casual way, but it's very superficial and it's very careless. In my opinion, it's not fulfilling because people who have done this many times will tell you it starts to feel empty. It's not fulfilling that the most fulfilling sex is in a relationship with someone that you care about. If you've done the work on yourself, you know how to be present, emotionally present, and tuned in. That's when you have really satisfying sex. And if you want to bring out a woman's utmost sexuality and her pleasure, that doesn't happen in a quick hookup. A woman's body needs time and attention to fully open. Because if you just go in so rough and so quick as these guys will do, she's going to contract and she may try to force herself open or make pretend sounds and fake her orgasms.
But in the end, it's not real. It's not deep. It's not juicy. And it's not lustful. And it's not even, it's just a mimicry of an experience. For a woman to fully open to her sexuality, the man has to fully penetrate her with all of his heart and attention, not just at the moment of hookup, but for the days and weeks before. But a lot of people don't even know that this kind of sex is possible because they're just like parading around, you know, look at my body and I just want to slide my dick in. And I think we've just lost a lot around our sexuality. I'm not a prude. You can certainly have that kind of quickie rough sex, but it's not as fulfilling, as passionate, as deep, as orgasmic as what I'm speaking of here. And so I think that um, uh, the advent of birth control and hookup culture has made people have this very quick sex, but people are having less sex than they ever used to. And I don't think that this hookup sex is as fulfilling. So I'm really a big believer that we need to use a lot of discernment with our sexual energy, not just so that we can feel good about ourselves, but so that we can enjoy the sex that we're having so much more. And, you know, those of you who are married or in long-term relationships and who are thinking, oh my God, I must be missing out. If you're having good sex with your partner, you are not missing out. Um, just listen to people who used to play the hookup game and who got tired of it. It is not fulfilling. You get to a point after a couple years of doing that where you're like, what am I doing? Anyway, um, so that's what I wanted to say. Also, if you want to uh, check out this book, I think I found it on Amazon or something. Because I was like, I want to read something other than personal development stuff. Like, I'm so tired of reading about personal development. I want something completely different. And I found this book as a recommendation. Um, and um, I like the story of, you know, a woman who is fiercely independent. Her family had cast her out and she you know, through grit and determination, uh, survived a very difficult time. So kind of seemed interesting to me. And again, thank you so much for watching my video.